We're going to do something kind of interesting here. I'm going to demonstrate for you the difference between the higher sample rate that you see in the upper audio track and the lower sample rate that you see in the uh, lower illustration here. Now the upper track was made using a MIDI file. One of my students did this and she submitted it and you'll notice here that we have the sampling rate of 48k. That means 48,000 times a second the amplitude of the wave is going to be sampled and the value recorded and all those values being recorded make for a file of a couple of hundred thousand characters. The lower illustration you see has been recorded only at 8,000 samples per second. Something's going to be lost in doing this, but the question is, is the file actually usable for the purpose? Now this is a ringtone, it doesn't have to have high fidelity. I'm going to play these and you can take a listen to them. Of course we're dealing here through the medium of YouTube and they may do some sound processing also that would change the uh, fidelity of these. But I think you'll be able to see some difference and then it's up to you to decide what the trade-off would be in a situation like this. The fidelity at the expense of the greater amount of storage or the lower fidelity and in compensation for that it takes much less memory to store. You'll notice if you compare visually these two waveforms that there's a high degree of similarity between their appearance. The bottom one, however, has been recorded at 8,000 samples per second. That's only one-sixth the amount of information that we had in the upper illustration. That means the reconstructed waveform is going to be less precise, less of an exact replica of the sound waves that were presented originally. Let's take a listen to how this works and you'll notice I think some difference in the quality of the sound. It's going to in some ways seem kind of muffled I think. There's always a trade-off between the amount of compression used on a sound file or a video file and the amount of storage space that's required to store the file, either on disk or in memory. Both the MP3 and the MP4 compression mechanisms by which we distribute sound and video in standard formats are lossy mechanisms. That is, they do lose some information in order to compress the sound or the video down to a size that's much more economical to store. As a rough estimate, they store the sound or video in only about 5% the amount of storage space that's required for the raw files, either sound or video. Mm -hmm. 